Okay. We will do just a few one-off things. Uh, I will show you one-off things um, uh, in Unreal that m you might find useful. And uh, we'll just kind of go on from there. So carrying over from, from, from this, uh, this structure that we made in the previous tutorial, um, I just want to show you how Marketplace works for Unreal. This is not something that you will be using, again, for this particular project, but it, uh, it is something that I find super useful for, you know, just, just to know uh, for your later projects. So Marketplace icon is located right here in the top uh, of, of, of the screen. And if you click it, uh, at least for me, nothing happens. <laughs> Um, and I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why nothing happens, but there's a workaround. It's basically um, that Epic Launcher, which you use to launch Unreal, right? It's, it's located, at least for me, in the bottom left corner, or bottom right corner of the screen. I expand this and I have all of my different stuff that's, that's running in the background. And one of them is Epic Games Launcher, right? I will double click on it to to kind of maximize it i guess and this is you know well, the, that program that sub program so in the epic games launcher you have like home store library blah 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 you know all, all, all of that good stuff you have your downloads uh this is um how do i explain what this does this is basically like a startup screen for Unreal and also for all of the games that have been made with, um, uh, the, 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 with Unreal, right? Uh, that are being either sold or you have downloaded. Uh, in this case, we don't care about the games that have been made. We only care about Unreal Engine and what you can get for it. So I just click on Unreal Engine, and then here I can see the marketplace. So if I click that, if I click that, please work, yes, thank you. It will open up this uh, marketplace, and you can see that uh, some of the stuff there is pretty damn expensive, 123 euros, right? Uh, but there are free things. To, to get in the marketplace. So for instance, um, let's say, well, first of all, you can just kind of navigate to the free uh, section of it, click on that, and here you'll see all of the different uh, free things. So what can you get from the marketplace? You can get um, blueprints. Blueprints are basically behaviors, behaviors of a character, behaviors of the world, and, 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 and whatnot. And you can get full scenes, uh, such as the, this, for instance, bridge scene, right? So it's like a full level that's completely done for you, and you can import it into your, uh, into your project and, and use assets from that scene. For instance, you know, oh, I really like this lamppost. I just download this whole bridge scene and I import it into my, um, my, my uh, Unreal project and I will just kind of grab just the, the, the lighting pole and place it in. Uh, wait, something in the chat, just a second. In the marketplace, for instance, you, you want to grab a tree or you want to grab uh, uh, some sort of a grass system, you can get that in the marketplace, right? So you don't need to model out and animate grass by yourself. Um, for instance, if I just uh, search products and I type in uh, grass, enter, like that, uh, there's a bunch of different, you know, paid for grass instances here. Uh, but I believe if I, um, <clears throat> if I give it max price of free, <laughs> Uh, if I click on that icon right there, then there's uh, a few uh, a few materials here, vegetation options here that we can indeed download and use um, for, for free, right? 
So for instance, this, this one right here, I will not be downloading it right now because that would just destroy our Zoom meeting because of the, of the download that's going to go on. Uh, you won't be able to hear me, but if you click on it, uh, and here you click on the, the, the free icon uh, right here, it's going to download this uh, grass library for you, right? And basically, once it's done, it will ask you, would you like to add it to a project, right? Would you like to add it to your project? And then you just agree. Maybe I can, let's just see, if, if it's too laggy, then I will cancel the, the download. So here, I just clicked on the free, and now it changed to add to project, and then I will click on, on that. And then I just choose which project do I want to add it to, right? So I just choose my project, add to project, and it's going to be um, added once, once it's downloaded. Some of these are super heavy. Uh, for instance, uh, okay, don't add. For instance, if we look for a really good ones, which is uh, called Megascans. Megascans. These are free. Well, that's not, that doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah, for instance, uh, I, I have this one, like mega scans dead stumps, right? These are, these are free to download and these are really, really high resolution, high quality. Can I make them bigger? Yeah, high quality 3D models of dead tree stumps, right? That, that you can insert to your scene. I believe this one is 1.6 gigabytes of 3D models. So every time when you see mega scans, um, just check how much free space do you have on your computer. That's that's the that's the way to go about it. But uh, basically, if you want to have a super duper like high quality scene, you do use mega scans library, which is. Uh, I believe most, either most of it or all of it is free to download and you can get really cool stuff. Uh, let me jump back to the marketplace. I can't, why can't I jump back to the marketplace? Let me, uh, please, please just escape. No, and uh, there we go. Um, yes, it's also located under free mega scans right here. Right. Okay, so that is that. Um, now, let's see, is there like a, sorry, now I'm going to slightly lag a bit because I need to figure out uh, how can I filter according to what I already have downloaded. Yeah, okay, so if you already have downloaded stuff, for instance, the mega scans uh, that stumps or uh, vegetation, blah, 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 all, all of this good stuff, you can add it to the project, right? So you can either add it before you download it, as I showed you before, or you can just go to the library, scroll down, and then here you'll see uh, vegetation foliage add to project, right? So I'll just add this to my project, my first project, add, and now it's going to start uh, downloading again. Oh my God, 1.5 gigabytes. Cancel, cancel, <laughs> abort, abort. <laughs> Let's see if there is a smaller one. Plants pack, add to project. Um, oh, I already have this downloaded. Okay, let's see. Uh, so once, once we have uh, added it to the project, you should be able to see a new folder in your content browser right here, which is called, uh, you know, in, in my case, it's called plants pack. In your case, it might be called something else, right? So how do you use that? Well, let's zoom into some, some part here, for instance, here, I want to add some, some, some plants that I have downloaded. Uh, I will go to uh, the plants pack. I'll go to meshes. And here I can see all of the different um, different meshes that there are, and there's even a, like a cliff uh, 
cliff mesh. So all you need to do is just drag and drop, right? Drag and drop it in. Bam. That's it. We have a rock now. <laughs> right? Quite, quite, quite easy. Uh, so that's just uh, apparently a rock. I don't need a rock. I want some plants. So let me go and find... Um, let's find some grass. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to the grass folder. Oh, there's Athena. There we go. I, I go to the grass folder. Uh, grass A, for instance. I'll just drag and drop it in. Right? That's it. That's, that's uh, grass A looks wonderful as you can see um, there are keep in mind uh, there are super high detailed grass uh, that you can download it's going to be of course heavier a little bit a little bit heavier and there is uh, this kind of a lower detailed grass so there's uh, like a one drawback of uh, high detailed gr grass is the performance and also another drawback is the size, the sheer size of how much you need to download. Uh, in terms of this kind of grass, I think it will look good once we have uh, set everything up properly. So let me show you how to set it up. Because I think grass is nice to have. Whew. Under modes, so I'm not going to be dragging and dropping in grass, 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 grass. I'm instead going to brush on the, the, the grass uh, and, and kind of use, uh, what's a good example? In Photoshop you have clone stamp tool where, where you kind of clone things with a brush. It's going to be the same thing here, only with 3D models. So under modes, if I expand that, I have shown you landscape mode where we created the, the landscape. There's also foliage mode. I keep saying foliage, I don't know why, but it's foliage. Uh, so foliage mode, if I enable that, it's going to, basically it's going to be quite similar to what we saw with the landscape mode, where you can uh, kind of use the brush to paint stuff or, or to display stuff in terms of, 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 uh, of the landscape. Here, you use a brush to paint on the grass, onto your 3D model. Not necessarily grass, it can be trees as well any type of foliage, right? So how do we do that? Well, uh, all you need to do is take your grass model and drag and drop it in to as a foliage type here. So that's now dragged in. And now if I grab my paintbrush tool and I kind of drag it around, it creates grass, right? Grass uh, patches. Okay, let me undo. Let, let me show you what happens when I give all three types of grass, because this is like grass type A, grass type B, grass type C. So let me add that one, let me add that one. All right. Now, if I zoom in, super hard to see. Oh my God, come on camera. Okay, uh, let me just make the camera a little bit slower. Um, it's basically taking three types of grass, which are quite similar in this case, and it's uh, choosing randomly which one to place at which given time. So, so it's randomizing, uh, randomizing the grass. Let me undo. Let's go back to our meshes. Um, and let's say round large, what's that? Flowers. Let me just drag and drop in the flowers to just see how they look like. Round large. And these are pretty, pretty flowers. Okay, that's good. So I'll just uh, add some, some, some flowers here. Flower A, flower B, flower C. I can also, I believe I can also just select all of these and drag all of them in, like so. And now when I paint, I'm creating a meadow, right? Now let me press play. Just walk to here. 
I mean, this is reasonable, right? And also, it's uh, I'm still getting uh, 50 frames, well, not 50, 40 uh, frames per second, which is uh, okay, right? Considering that I'm running this on a laptop and that um, th there's a lot of moving parts here, right? Uh, getting 50 frames per second is, uh, I, I, I believe, okay. And also, I'm recording the, 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 the video, right? Okay, so this is uh, how it's done. It's basically you just insert grass. And there's uh, other like variations of it. You can have square, uh, square patches of grass, uh, medium-sized uh, flowers, and, and, and whatnot, right? So there's, there's a lot of things uh, that you can do here. Um, sorry? Yeah, of course. Uh, yes, uh, so here, if you click on this, um, you know, on, on the grass, for instance, you can change the density, right? It's, uh, so here on the left-hand side, you have grass, 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 you have flower, 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 and here you can change the density of them, right? So uh, instead of... Yeah, maybe we need to increase the density of grass. So here I will just say 500, so five times more. 500, 500. And then I add, and here you can see there is much more grass now. And if I want to have less flowers, can I select all of these and just, yeah, I can, I think. I can change the density to 20. And now it's, it's uh, much more grass and much less flowers, right? So you do have the possibility to, like this is what it was before, like that. And this is what, what it is right now, right? So it's, it's the density. You can change a lot of things here, by the way. You can change the scaling of, uh, of these things. So for instance, I can, uh, say that, well, it's not all of the flowers and all of the grass strands that are the same, uh, same size. Um, if I select all of these and I say that, well, the minimum scale needs to be 0 0.8 and the maximum scale is 1.5, something like that. And let me just erase. Uh, so you can, by the way, erase the... the, the, the uh, the grass, right? And let me reapply, or rather paint, now with the change in, um, change in scale. Ooh, that's a, that's a lot of grass, though. It, some strands of grass will be bigger, some will be smaller. Let's see how much we can do before it breaks. So I'm constantly, as I'm brushing it on, I'm constantly looking at the left, uh, right-hand side of my screen where it says the frames per second. And yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, I will show you how to get that, that number later on. For now, just focus on, on learning the basics. So now I'm dipping below 30 frames per second. And this is where I would kind of stop and, and say, well, maybe it's, it's enough. Right, for, for my poor, poor laptop. If I didn't record, I would say I could get, um, I, I would be able to do something like that, I think, quite, quite, quite easily. It's still kind of 30 frames per second, that's nice. Let me press play, let me go to the meadow. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, huh? Uh, considering that it's just uh, a few few polygons with a texture attached to it, it's all you know. It, 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 it's all related to uh, uh, to the amount of how much stuff you have. So this is a very fast way of how to how to create a meadow, I think, and it's it's nice. Um, let me erase it. Just, 
can I just increase the size? Yes, I can. Bam. Done. Erased. Like that. You can, by the way, change the density right here if you want it to be denser. Not, not. It's not necessary to change it. Uh, change it here, right? There's. This is the like the brush settings. If you increase the density here, it's going to add more stuff. Okay, so this is like just the basics of uh, that aspect of Unreal, creating, uh, creating grass. I think that is uh, important for you to 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 know to know this functionality. Uh, now, one more thing that I wanted to show uh, that I kind of missed in the previous tutorial is, oh, sorry. If you want this plants pack, uh, you just uh, go to marketplace. And I think you just search for plants pack and you will find it. I, I just want to see if, if it's the case. Oh my God, marketplace, come on. How? Okay, let, let me just check one thing real quick. It's not even that bad. Oh, okay, my, my uh, graphics card is freaking out. Um, if I type in plants pack, I think it's going to be here. Uh, free, please. Free, please. And it is not here. Hmm. Foliage. Free. I will not be spending too much time uh, trying to to find it. Yeah, I can't find it anymore. Oh wait, uh, is this the? Is this that? Looks like it. No, it's not that. Anyway, sorry. Uh, now, now I'm just kind of struggling with the marketplace trying to find what I've downloaded. Um, you can download your own stuff, right? It's, it's the same procedure. You just find where these uh, meshes are once you have downloaded them, uh, and then you just add them to the, to the scene, right? And then thus you have, the, thus you have uh, everything here. Okay, so now moving on to materials, creating materials in Unreal, right? I have shown you how to steal materials or how to rather uh, grab materials from the starter content, but you would be limited to only, only these materials, right? So if you want carbon fiber, then sure, but maybe you don't want carbon fiber in your, your buildings. So you need to understand one thing, and that's, how do I explain it? Um, there's no bump map in Unreal, right? There's, there's, well, there is a bump map, but it's mostly replaced by uh, a normal map, right? So anytime when you download a material, you need to find one that has a normal map or else it's going to look a little bit flat, right? So let's say this element right here is going to be our test subject. Yeah, it seems, seems to be okay as a test subject. And I'm going to create a new material, right? So I'll go to my starter, like uh, not starter, just my content folder here. And I will go to materials folder where I have my landscape, my stone, blah, 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 all of that good stuff. And I will just create a new material. So I'll right click in that folder and I'll just choose material. No need to do material function or anything like that. You just straight up create a new material. Material, and I'll call this, um, I don't know, a test material. Oh yeah, uh, tests dash material. Usually, by the way, uh, okay, that's this is not pedagogical of me. I should do it this way: m dash test. So 
that this is the name in convention. M stands for material, and then you do the not dash underscore. Is it underscore? I think it's underscore. And then you type in test, right? Or, or any name. This is the naming convention. Uh, then you, well, before you double click inside and start messing around with it, you need to uh, grab some, um, some, some textures, right? So the one that, the, 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 how do you call it, the website that, that I like using is Texture Haven because you can get uh, some pretty good textures from it. So texturehaven.com. You, uh, you should already know about HDRI Haven. That's where you get all of the free HDRIs from. This is Texture Haven. Uh, so we go to textures here, and this is you know a, a set of like a set of textures that you can download. And some of these are pretty good. Some of these are okay, but all of these are in high quality. So. For instance, I want some concrete, um, and I will, from concrete, I will just say, sure, let's do painted concrete, this, this texture right here. Uh, once I select it, I can see that there are these maps that I can download, right? So I will just say, yeah, just give me all of the maps. And it asks me for, okay, what kind of a resolution do you want and what kind of uh, format do you want them in? So I will choose JPEG. Um, I, I don't know why, I just prefer using JPEG. I, I believe it's because just it's smaller. Um, PNG has its own benefits because PNG has uh, an additional layer of transparency attached to the material. Um, or, or alpha channel attached to the material, uh, but uh, it, in this particular particular case, we don't need it, so I'll just use JPEG. And here, in terms of resolution, um, never go 8K. Like, I, I don't know at which point in time would you need to have a 8K material, 8K resolution material. Uh, like, 4K should be, the, the highest resolution that you go for. And 4K is usually something that you will kind of have your camera like looking directly at from a very close distance. In this case, I will just go for 1K because I want to download it as fast as possible and just to show you the principles, right? So 1K, it downloads, I will just cut it and paste it on my desktop like that, I will extract it. There we go. And here I have all of these maps, right? All of these maps are here. So now I need to link these maps to my project, right? So I'll open up my, no, that's not my project. That's my project. I'll open up this bad boy here and Wherever I have, oh, I don't have an additional, okay, so I need an additional, um, yeah, additional folder. So let me create a new folder right at the starter content, uh, not, I keep saying starter content, right at the root folder of my project, content folder. I'll create a new folder. I'll call this textures, right? And in that folder, I'll create one more and call it uh, concrete. You know, just to keep things clean. Uh, and then I will just drag and drop in uh, my textures into that folder. Like that. So now they're located here. That's great. Now I can come back. Uh, concrete floor. Okay, so the name of it is concrete floor. Now I'll come back to my starter. Uh, <laughs> keep saying starter. I'll come back to my root folder. Uh, I'll find my materials folder. And here I will just simply double click on the material test. Right? Like that. Which is basically this, this, uh, icon 
right here. Not icon, uh, this uh, node right here, which is waiting for us to give it a base color, uh, to give it a, is it metallic or not, and, and, and so on. So it, it's waiting for us to give it some inputs. Right, and then ambient occlusion is there as well. That's that's great. So to let's come back to what we already have working. For instance, or, or actually, let's let's look at the uh, at the material that's already made, right? That's in starter content under materials, and let's just open up um, any yeah concrete tiles, sure. I'll just open up that material to just show you uh, how a final material would look like. So this is uh, actually this is much more complex than the final material uh, because it's it has a lot of um, um, how do you call it functionality, a lot of additional functionality attached to it. For instance, this one is if you zoom out. Uh, the material tiling will change. In our case, we will not be implementing that because we only have one texture, right? If we had a texture and a larger version of that texture, then we could start messing around with this, but instead we will just uh, be using a texture uh, sample node, right? Okay. <sighs> let's, let's do this. So I will use this as a, a base, right? Not, not as a base, but as a reference point, right? To, to understand what I'm doing. And uh, this is something that I encourage you to do at the start, just opening up a material that is already there, you know, in the starter content, and just looking at how things are connected and what things need to be fit, fed into what. So I can see that, okay, if I want to get a texture inside of my material, I need to use um, a node that's called texture sample. Okay, I will come back here to my material test and I will just drag out from base color, like so, and I will search for texture sample. Texture sample. There it is, click on that. And there, that's the texture sample node, okay? It gives me an error and the error is, yo, I don't have a texture right now. Okay, so we just select it. And here where, once we have it selected, we have its like options or properties or details uh, on the left-hand side of the screen where we can add a texture, right? So I'll just expand this. And I remember that there was something with concrete. So I'm searching for, yeah, concrete uh, floor painted uh, textures. And I'll find the one that says diffuse because diffuse is uh, another word for base color, right? So that's the diffuse one. I just select it. Now this is not an error anymore. And if we wait 50 years, it's going to update eventually. It's going to update eventually. Okay, it's updated here and it's going to, yeah, there we go. It, I promise it updates a little bit faster if, if, you're not, if you're not recording. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And it's, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a texture. It's super flat right now. And the reason why it's flat is because uh, there's no, um, there's no bump map, there's no nothing associated with it, right? So we need more texture samples. Let me actually look at the, the folder with the textures and see. So we have displacement. I will not be using displacement for this material because displacement is heavy and we don't want heavy stuff. Uh, there is AO. AO stands for ambient occlusion. It's ba basically a dirt map, you know. Uh, so it darkens certain parts of the material. Then we have normal map, which is, as I mentioned before, a replacement for a bump map. Then we have a roughness map, 
And we have roughness A, oh, roughness A ambient occlusion. So we will not be using that as well. So basically all we need is diffuse AO and normal map. Sorry, diffuse AO, normal and roughness maps. Okay. We have diffuse roughness. I expand that and I type in um, texture sample. Alternatively, you can just kind of copy, you know. So we have that. Then we have normal. That's also be. Uh, that's also going to be a texture sample like that. And then we have ambient occlusion. Texture sample. Uh, Ninety percent of the materials are going to be like this, right? only for inputs and it's going to give you a material. So now for roughness, uh, let me just add the texture floor painted rough. Then for normal, let me add texture floor painted, uh, floor painted normal. And for ambient occlusion, let me add the ambient occlusion. Uh, Floor painted AO. Now let's wait. Uh, wait. Wait for this to update. Come on. Doesn't seem like much, but I think it's it's going to be uh, it, it's it's going to be there. Uh, like it's going to be. Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's going to show up in the. Um, in the 3D model more than it is here. At least it's not that shiny anymore. That's good. I should have uh, found a material that has a stronger, uh, uh, a, a much stronger, uh, what, what, what's the name? God damn it. Uh, displacement, my much stronger texture. That's fine. Let me hit save. Here. I'm struggling with words these days. Come on. There we go. So it's saved. Uh, I will not be... Uh, oh, rather I can close it. Close that. Uh, we can kind of investigate what's, what's going on here. So it's mostly like... Why is it adding something? So it's making it brighter a little bit. Uh, that's that's cool, I guess. Uh, tile variation. I'm just looking through if there's anything that I should mention. Yeah, for instance, here you can see a normal map that's much more active than what we have downloaded, uh, which is fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, we will come back to that later. Or rather, let me cancel that and minimize that. Okay, so here we have our materials set up, uh, or our material set up, material test. And as per usual, I will be creating a instance, material instance of it, so that uh, later on I have the possibility to introduce sliders, to introduce functionality, additional functionality to the master material. And instead, the material instance will just have um, I will be able to produce variations within the material instance. So mtest inst, I think is fine. Uh, this guy is our test subject. And let me just actually drag and drop it in like so. Wait a bit. Jeez, come on. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, there we go. So that's our texture. Um, let's say this texture, the tiling of the texture is wrong and you want it to be smaller or bigger, right? Then you need to actually come back to material test here and mess around with the UVs, 
right? With the coordinates of all of these materials. And I believe, um, let me just double check one thing. Yes, it is texture coordinates, right? It is texture coordinates and can it be changed locally? No, it, it can't, but we, it can be multiplied. That's cool. Uh, and that is that, and that is that. Okay, so we can do it th uh, that way as well. Uh, I am going to create a new uh, node inside of my master material. I'll call it, not call it, but that node is called texture coordinate, right? Which, which has styling associated with it. And I will multiply those two numbers of tiling by some number, right? So that is going to be multiply, just multiplication. And the number that I'm going to use is not going to be a constant number, which I can only change inside of the master material, but rather it's going to be a scalar, scalar parameter. Uh, we used this quite a bit uh, in the previous tutorial. That's, uh, that's what's called the slider. And I'll just call this tiling size. Tiling size. Okay, so default value, I'll just have it as one. Minimum value, I'll have it as 0 0.1. Maximum value of it, I'll have as 10. And now let's just connect multiply to UV's input for every texture so that all of the textures kind of react to us changing the, the, the scalar value. Okay, so that is done. Now I can save this material test. So we save it. It's, it's doing the thing. Right? My, my phone is going ham. Okay. Um, and now, actually, we don't need this anymore. So let me close it. Would you like to apply the changes? No, I don't. Uh, for material test, I will just close it. Uh, so now, virtually nothing changed. That's because we are just taking the original UVs of our shape and we're multiplying them by one, meaning that nothing changes. But now we have a slider and that slider can be accessed through material test uh, instance, not the master, but the instance. If I double click on that and let me minimize it like so, then here we have tiling size associated, right? So I'll enable this. And if I increase the size of the tiling, you can see, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that looks beautiful. Uh, beautiful tiling emerges. <laughs> so this is not a great material to tile. But basically we can, uh, let's say two, we can increase or decrease tiling this way, 0.5, it will become super big, uh, 20, or no, 20 is not, not there, 10, it's going to be super small. So, missed, have you missed this? <laughs> like, have you missed this part in Unreal? So it is still a, a very present thing. This texture tiling is still a very present thing in Unreal. It's just that up until now, we have used materials which are, which have a super high standard of, uh, of how they are created, thus you can't see the tiling of, of those materials. But if we just download one, then you suddenly start kind of noticing that, oh crap, right, right. I, I need to also think about the tiling, right? I can't have too much of the same material. So if we do like 1.5, I think that is still okay. You can see, start seeing the tiling. Even if one, you see the tiling. God damn it! Let's do 0.5. Let's let's have a big boy. Uh, so that I'll just hit save, close my instance, hit play, take a look at the material. Yeah, it looks okay. So that's that. Okay. Um, that's that's a very short 
introduction to materials, but hopefully that will um, that will get you going, like get, get you started, and at least you'll know what kind of questions to ask if any questions arise, right? So um, just uh, test it out. Um, one last thing is, let me save this whole project. Yeah, that's fine. Let me close it. Uh, yeah, save selected. So I have sent you. Uh, 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 I have sent you a RAR file uh, with with a project inside of it. You will be able to open it uh, through your uh, Unreal. So you just basically save it anywhere on your computer, and then you will need to navigate to that uh, particular project. So the way you do it is when you run Unreal, uh, Unreal Engine, let me minimize those, when you run the Unreal Engine, uh, you will be, as per usual, you are greeted with select or create a new project uh, scene, not scene, uh, splash screen, where you basically can only select from projects that you are currently working on. And even if you have downloaded uh, the thing that I've sent and you have opened it, uh, not opened it, but rather if you have downloaded it and unzipped it, you still won't be able to see it here. So you need to browse to it. The way you do it is you click more, that, that little button there, more, and then you can click on the browse button here. And then you just kind of navigate to where you have saved your your project. And I believe mine is... Um, no, 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 no. There we go, here, there, this. So you find this time attack Unreal Engine project file, you hit open and it's going to open it up for you. Once you do it at least once, then every time when you load it, uh, when you load Unreal, it's going to be here in the, in the selection, right? So you can just select it and hit open. You don't need to browse to it every time. So let me open it up and just kind of quickly explain you um, the basics of what what you will find in that scene, and uh, we will go on from there. So this is the scene, very very basic landscape, you know, with very very basic uh, texture associated with it, uh, some cellular automata thing floating around. And why are these in smoke? No, 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 wait. Uh, there's one thing that I need to change real quick. Um, edit checkpoint. Just a second. There we go. If you see it, <clears throat> if you see the checkpoints as smoke, uh, let me know. Uh, I will show you exactly how to, how to kind of fix it. So that it's not smoke, but rather, actually smoke is kind of nice, but uh, it's, it's better if it's for, for now, if it's more visible as a ring of fire or something like that. I know how it looks. Um, we will make it nicer <laughs> later. We'll make it less in your face later with, with some more, more, more decent uh, uh, effects. For now, that's fine. Uh, so we will have these rings of fire. There we go. They're, they're burning. That's nice. We hit play. Oh my god, my... There's music associated with this whole thing. Uh, so once you hit play, you will be greeted with this kind of start screen. You know, create the tools, blah, blah, blah. Mouse click to start. Click the mouse. It will count down. And then you just go, go to town, right? Going through these rings, and once you pass one ring, uh, another one will appear. And you just need to, whoop, boop, boop, don't drop. Kind of just, the, the goal is to go through, through all of the rings, right? So that, and there's one more there. Up, 
Pop, 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 pop. Yes, that's good. Then we go here. There is double jump in this version. <clears throat> so you can press spacebar twice. And then yay, that's your trophy. Right? <clears throat> Super simple stuff. Uh, the time gets recorded. Uh, so now, once I run this again, on the right hand side of my screen, I can see the best time. Okay, let me skip out of this. So what can you do here? Right. Um, in the next tutorial, I will show you how to operate within this file, uh, how, how to change things within this file. But the first thing that you kind of should do is delete the, you know, the, 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 the mesh. Come on, delete, yes, there we go. Delete the mesh, delete the landscape, and create your own level, right? So stuff that you were testing out on your own file, you just basically uh, do like a, a polished version of it in this, uh, in this downloaded project file. Um, that is going to be done, uh, like I'm going to show you how to do it uh, later <sighs> next week yeah ne ne next week we will learn how to do this but for now this is uh, this is kind of it I just wanted to show you how to do materials you know the, the most basic uh, way of how to do materials uh, how to deal with grass and also how to be able to open up this this bare bones uh, um, Bare, bare bones project that I've pre-made for you, so that you don't need to deal with all of the um, all all of the different aspects of it. For instance, wait, where's this guy tracker, right? So you don't need to do you know all, all of this. And it's this is again this is like grasshopper, right? So this is basically scripting. Um, and it has like uh, different parts of the script that call other parts of the script. So for instance, checking if the lab has finished, updating the times, uh, checking if the race has been completed, um, and then just a regular event graph, right? Um, right. What else is there to, to, uh, to say? Nothing much mess around with this, uh, delete most most of the things here. Uh, please keep at least one, like at, at least checkpoint one, please keep that, <laughs> right? Don't, don't delete uh, things that you might think that are necessary. For instance, if you see uh, something that's called, um, well, network player starters, whatever, um, blah, 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 tracker, and you have no idea what tracker means, don't delete it, right? But if you see a chair and you kind of zoom into it and you go like, uh, maybe I don't need this chair in my file, so you just delete it, right? So clean it up, create a new landscape, uh, add your, your structure to it and start experimenting the pathways and so on. Uh, what what kind of pathways uh, can be taken and start making notes as to uh, what kind of additional geometry can be added um, to to the structure uh, to, to make it passable like to to be able to walk through the structures that you have made if there needs to be anything added ideally there shouldn't be uh, anything added, but uh, I, I expect that in some cases you will want to have like a ramp or a staircase added to, to, your, uh, to your structure. Is there anything else that I want to... Yeah, okay, so there's one last thing. I don't know which one, <laughs> like, I think this is like last thing number five. <laughs> but uh, one last thing is... Um, how steep of a slope can the character go on, right? So how, how steep can the slope be? That thing is um, controlled by this 
character right here, first person character. And I believe uh, if you just search for uh, slope, nope. Okay, so if if it's not there, uh, let, let, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So I have my character selected. So now I'm in my uh, in, in the details of the character and let me just scroll through the details and try to find um, not collision, but rather uh, navigation, maybe? No, it's not navigation. Activation, cooking, char character movement. Character movement. And character movement. Uh, character movement, walking. Maximum step height, walkable floor angle. There we go. So walkable floor angle is the angle at which the character can still walk on, right? So here uh, you can increase it or decrease it. Please, please, please don't do 90 degrees because, uh, well, we're not doing a Spider-Man uh, Spider game, first of all. Second of all, it will become ridiculous. And as architects, we, uh, we still want the, this to be somewhat realistic, like the experience of a user to be somewhat realistic. So you don't, don't, don't do like 90 degrees. It's impossible to walk on 90 degrees like a, on a wall. That is it. Okay, this time it's, it's really... It. Do you have any any questions that are not uh, regarding the fact that the school still doesn't have Unreal Engine installed? <laughs>